So uh, we'll call the back to order this uh, budget meeting, and uh, that moves. We're now moved on to section nine, which is additional requests included in the budget. And so these are, uh, and that's the important. Um, those are the important words included in the budget. These six items are already in the budget, but the administration would like direction from council on each of these items individually. So I'm going to go through them one at a time. We can have discussion on them uh, as we see fit. But we're not going to take a we're not going to take a presentation from the administration because you've already heard the presentations. If you want clarification, we can get that obviously. But I'm going to we'll have this will be a council discussion and we can work through them. Councillor Grace. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I wondered if I could ask um, a couple of questions of Dan just generally about. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, do you have any? Do you, do you have an estimate of what the dollar amount would be that we would have to work with here? You you talked about the seven hundred and fifty thousand being considerably less. I think you said than the. Um, you know that five percent rate that I estimated would be the municipal rate, but in a blended situation, it would be considerably less. Do you have any sense of how much money we have to work with? Yeah, so I pur purposely didn't give a, a, a dollar figure or range in the budget package. I am comfortable saying that there should be at least seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars available. Um, the the mayor may have more insight into the county budget and, and what that's looking like, I would anticipate that there would be um, more available. Last year, the number was around 900,000 available um, from the same methodology. Uh, if the county were to come in around 5%, it would be uh, about that same dollar figure. So there's certainly uh, the possibility of room beyond the 750,000, uh, but it's, it's certainly not guaranteed. Uh, and if you add up all of the uh, additional requests that are not included, um, it adds up to over a million dollars in additional requests. Um, I'm quite comfortable saying that we would most likely not be able to fit all of that in. Yeah, so I think for the purposes of this discussion, we should count on the treasurer's estimates at $750,000 available, and every additional item that this council approves will let will should be expected to come off that total. Uh, anything else other than that, it will be un an unexpected bonus. It may come, it may not, but that would be the prudent way, I think, to proceed today. That's that's fair. Yeah. Okay. But for now, these items, uh, 9.1 through 9.6, are already worked into the budget. So uh, decisions you make on these ones won't have a material effect on where we stand right now, unless you decide to remove one of them, in which case... It'll build more room. Uh, the Vice Deputy Mayor. You have a comment, Mr. Mayor, and I, on the IT position. I, I meant to throw out a couple of things this morning. I know it's built into the zero, which is great. And just you know, taking back a look, look back at 2002 in municipal office, there were 30 users or 70 users today. A workstations 35 back uh, 2002, 3, 50, 50 workstations today. Policing, policing alone has increased significantly with their number of number of users from 15 to 27 so I mean I, I, I like the case being being made for the IT and I'm really pleased to see it in the position and seeing it in the budget this year I would however like to think that we can reduce that number by thirty thousand dollars mr. mayor and here's why um, that number in here 132 thousand is an annualized amount and uh, this budget probably won't be approved till I'm assuming January, maybe February. Every time you advertise an interview and someone leaves a position, they're already in for this new position. Um, you know, I, I, I could easily say easily that the 130, if you reduce it by 10,000 for inflationary rate, take it down to 120. But I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't understand why we would not reduce that 120 down to 90, only because. That annual that position will not really be hired. Uh, I would think at the earliest April first, maybe even May first. So, I would I would like to see that number reduced. I think at the end of the day, we're probably going to be trying to find some some savings. So I want to throw that out there right now before we approve this 132. I'm not sure we should be including the full one 132. I think we should be be including um, a ninety thousand dollar figure. So that would be my recommendation.
because it's going to take some time to put this position in place. So, okay, so just to be clear, right now we're discussing 9.1, Manager Information yeah. Technology. Which I totally uh, so, endorse. So we're uh, into that discussion. I just would maybe perhaps ask uh, the Director of Corporate Services uh, maybe just to speak uh, to what the Vice Deputy Mayor has just suggested. Yes, that is correct. That budget is budgeted at a full 12 month salary. So that is the correct assumption. So in theory, it does take on average around 60 days from start to finish to hire a full-time position. So, and, But I would also, um, there's another request later on for IT services, so we can maybe discuss other options there So, as well. So the Deputy Mayor? I agree and disagree with the Vice Deputy Mayor. So I agree we need this position. It is a huge position. We're growing. We need to be up on all this stuff. However, to reduce this, might limit the, the candidate that we're getting. We know that it's going to take time to get them, so our, the pay will be reduced in that way as in not being paid, correct? So, no, I think what... Um, that's, that's not what I'm suggesting. Yeah, the that the deputy we would prorate, so oh. the full salary is 12 months, so we would take nine twelfths of the budgeted amount into the Wait, 2020. The same salary amount still remains yeah. in, but it's just it's prorated because it wouldn't be hired probably to April 1. But we don't so, know what you, the in candidate 12, will be, though. So, no, but to put... Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. So I think the, the suggestion from the Vice Deputy Mayor is uh, that we allocate $90,000 to this amount. Is that, And is it the view of the administration that that is a, would be reasonable on a prorated basis uh, to fund this position in 2020? Well, until we do a full job evaluation, we're not exactly sure what band the salary will land in, but that's we're based on the assumption that that's where we think it will land. Um, so yeah, if you could, pr that is based on annual salary. So if we wanted to prorate it nine twelfths or whatever, or what's like, the Just do the math. So you, you have a comment, the CAO? Uh, no, I, I think the director uh, uh, was accurate, and in, in especially the last couple of sentences, if, if council chooses to reduce the amount, uh, we would uh, just uh, delay the hiring. It would be a, a gapping. It, it's fairly common. We would have to include the annualization in the following year budget, so it's, it's a one-time savings and, and deferral, but certainly we uh, could do that. So, but just to be clear, the intention is not to delay the hiring, but just to recognize the built-in delay that would occur with that, whether, even if we said, go ahead today, there would be a built-in delay that you couldn't avoid. So. Okay, so can you make a motion, Vice Deputy Mayor, so we can consider that? I would like to make a motion to write it out. Or? No, that's fine. Just make it verbally. Well, I just uh, I would like to move that we we approve the the addition of the manager information technology position, uh, permanent full time, uh, with with um, a prorated budget approval of ninety thousand dollars. The, the deputy. Well, is there a seconder? For the resolution, seconded by uh, Councillor Smith. Discussion, the Deputy Mayor. I, I worry about what happens if we get somebody who's job ready. So we get this out in January and they actually are ready to start in February. By dropping it down, you're not going to be getting the full market value of this person. I think if we leave it at this and it's prorated by their, by their employment start, it's going to be covered the same way. Okay. So we have the resolution. I would just note to the... And I don't know what the mover and seconder think of this, but this budget does include $4,000 for professional development and phone and computer and phone, um, which is not part of the prorating of the salary. Uh, is it your intention that we only fund this at $90,000, even including those additional expenses, or is it your intention that we fund $90,000 plus the $4,000? Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I, I, I used the $132,000 and reduced it by $12,000 to get to one twenty. Okay. And then what I did is I prorated it 25%, so 75%. So, so I reduced it by 25% with an expected start date of April 1st. So I already did okay. take off 12000 to get to the 120 and prorated it to 90, which is 25%, assuming a start date of April 1. Because the budget's approved when? When do we generally, generally February? What are you targeting for final approval? Well, I think it will ultimately depend on if we're waiting for those final budgets received from other sources that could impact our final decisions on budget or unless council would yeah. allow pre-approval on certain items of a budget. 
So I was only expecting, Mr. Mayor, that you'd be advertising sometime in February, interview in March, and start dating April 1. That's, that's my, that was my basis. And I just think at the end of the day, maybe we will, you know, we might be wanting to find 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars. So this was one area I thought we might be able to save 30 for. for okay, Councillor Carr. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just curious um, if you can maybe explain to me how we set a salary for somebody like this. I know this isn't what I normally do, but I did do a little bit of homework on it. <clears throat> and, you know, it said a normal somebody being hired in this position with one to four years' experience in Ontario would average about 56000 Five to nine years would be about 78000 and a manager's position would be somewhere about $82,000. Um, those were off uh, Ontario website looking at the actual statistics of what they're paid. So I'm just wondering how we come up with the $128,000 for a salary. I based it based on what our current or our current structure is based on our current levels. I had discussions with our HR manager. We looked at sort of other similar positions. So it that's how we gauged it. So CEO. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, and building on what the director said, is we do have a formal job evaluation process uh, that rates all of our positions. It is a council-approved process. Uh, uh, we do it as new uh, positions come on, and we also do all of our positions on a regular cycle. Uh, so you'll see that cycle it once during your term, and we have uh, um, um, ratings and, and grading that we do for each of the positions, and it's scored, and, and it's a very technical, formal process. Um, that we use to determine salaries. Uh, so there's a motion on the floor. It's to set this uh, at ninety thousand dollars down from one thirty two. Um, so is there any further discussion to that motion? I'll ask all in favor. Opposed? That's carried. So it's approved at ninety thousand dollars. So that moves us on then to 9.2. It's approved at $90,000. It's, it's, we've approved it. That's what we're doing. Uh, we approved the, my, my understanding of the resolution was to approve it at $90,000. So you, so you're, you, That's fine. I appreciate that uh, interpretation, and I, I, I can see it that way. If you have further comments, uh, go ahead and make them. The Councillor Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm looking back at page uh, 51, which is the Information Technology section. And in there, for 2019, we budgeted 77231 for wages, which is presumably our current IT specialist. So my question is, is this new position proposed to be a manager above our current IT person? Is it conceivable then that our current IT person may have an opportunity to apply for this job? Yes, we will be following our current recruitment procedure that has been developed by the town, yes. Okay. That is. So we may be uh, conceivably promoting an internal employee and then hiring a junior employee, maybe more along the scales of what Councillor Carr uh, suggested. Some comments, CIO? I, I would just caution um, um, about speaking about specific individuals. So the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the plan is uh, we'll have two funded positions in information technology. Um, a, a, we have a, a current position and we're adding a second position. The second position will be a more senior position. Uh, how we fill those positions will will follow our internal approved process. Further comments before we vote on the main resolution? So uh, all in favor then of uh, funding the manager information technology at the revised amount. Opposed? Carried. Okay, so that moves on to 9.2, increased transfer to the fleet reserve. You've heard about that. It was, uh, the Director of Protective Services spoke to it. Uh, so I'll ask uh, for direction from Council. Councilor Carr. 
Sorry, I just wanted to confirm once more with this one here. This is going to be a $50,000 increase over and on top of what's been shown in the fleet allocation already because it shows the, I don't have it right there, but it was like 638 up to 688 or something like that. So now we're, we're actually putting 100000 in this year. Is that correct? Is that the way I'm seeing that? We'll ask the administration. That's correct. So th this, this increase is included in the current budget. So you see in the fleet operating budget, a transfer of 685000 into the fleet reserve versus a prior year transfer of 635000 So that means that there's already been 50000 that isn't being shown on this that was included from last year already, and then this is the other fifty to make the $100,000? Uh, the, the amount uh, that's on the, the sheet that you would be voting on is the change from 635 to 685 uh, in 2018, the amount would have been 585. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can we get some direction. Okay. Moved by the vice deputy mayor to be approved. Seconded by Councillor Grace. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? That's approved. So that moves us then on to landfill expansion planning. I was spoken to by the Director of Infrastructure and Development. Uh, it's a uh, uh, $20,000 expense funded from the landfill reserve. Uh, can we get some direction? Councillor Rich. Yeah, it's through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so in light of the fact that um, our landfills, uh, it seems like a couple of years ago we, we had I can't remember the numbers, but uh, a, a significantly more years available than now. Um, as part of this planning process, is there any opportunity to maybe um, include a little bit of an investigation in, in uh, incineration? Um, I, just to, to see, it, could that be part of, part of the planning process to see? Because I know that incineration does reduce um, the amount going to landfill by almost 70% cases as far as I've read um, and I don't know a lot about it and I've never really had any professional advice I, I was wondering if you could include that and if maybe there be a nominal cost associated with it thank you and through the waste management master plan that we're working on right now that we're planning on bringing back to council in February we'll have looked at incineration as an option so this is specific to putting a plan together to go to the ministry for the expansion Okay, uh, Councillor Mayat. Move to accept. It's been moved. Is there a seconder? Councillor Rich for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? That's approved. So that moves us then on to 9.4, winter salt. Uh, spoken to by the Director of Infrastructure and Development from the tax levy, $30,000 in additional salt. Direction, please. Moved by Councillor Grace for approval. Second by Councillor Rich. Question from Councillor Carr. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just curious. I know I seem to remember this one coming up last year for my first budget uh, through it. Is this just for this year? Is that what we're getting, or is this a bulk buy that's going to be servicing for a couple of years? I, I know it depends on whether you can't predict that, but following trends. Thank you, and through you. This is just for this year. So we buy. Um, we buy in bulk sort of by going with Concordan and the county, but we pay per tone and then we pay for what we actually bring. So they gave us a price and a range of how much salt we order and then we pay for what we actually buy. So it is an estimate based on what we think we'll use this year. Okay, thank you. So it has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Councillor Mayette? Uh, just, I know there's been, we've heard some talk about uh, using the salt sand mixture and changing the ratios. Um, and is this a reflection of the fact that we're going to have a higher ratio of salt to sand? So if I get through you, we will keep the same ratio, which is the one that Councillor Grace talked about being 8% versus uh, 2 to 5. We keep that same ratio, but this is indicative of the fact that we're putting salt down more often than we were before. So we're seeing that we're using more salt. Um, we're putting more sand down at the same time. It's just that... Um, the winter sand is ordered every two years, so we haven't seen that increased request for more okay. sand yet. And the salt is more expensive. So salt is more expensive. Further discussion to the resolution? Seeing none, all in favor? It's carried. 
That moves us on then to 9.5, increased uh, part-time pool wages, spoken to by the Director of Community Services, a tax levy increase of $24,000 for additional part-time pool staff. Uh, direction. Moved by Councillor Grace, second by Councillor Carr. Discussion? All in favour? Approved. And that moves us then on to the final one, increased grant to the airport committee, which is an increase of $1,825, uh, spoken to by the Director of Community Services, direction from Council. Councillor Carr. Moved by Councillor Carr, seconded by Councillor Rich. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favour? It's carried. Okay, so that's the end of the those requests that are included in the budget. Now, Section 10, additional requests not included in the budget. Uh, and the first one is an increased transfer to the Legacy Reserve, uh, $750,000. Uh, so just to be very clear with Council before we discuss this, that we do not yet know the actual number that this will amount to. This is this is a book, an earmark, if you like, or a, a, a ballpark, but we can't possibly know this until other information has come available. So the direction we're looking for today, uh, I, in my view, and maybe the administration will uh, correct me if they think it should be something else, is an overall direction to the administration that we are in favor of heading toward the blended tax increase uh, over and above the municipal rate uh, and continuing to build the legacy fund uh, at approximately the rate that they've laid out here, the 3% tax increase, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's really a direction to, to keep going along those lines that we want to make another contribution to the legacy fund. So. Um, we'll take discussion and direction. The Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would it be prudent to put this at the end? Then we'd know, have a better idea of what we have added on to it. There was a comment. Yeah, through uh, you, Mr. Mayor. It, uh, as the Mayor has quite ably uh, described, there's a lot of factors that go into the final number. Uh, one of them is, is the county and school board tax increase. So you remember last year through council uh, uh, direction, um, we were aiming for something, something in the order of, of this magnitude, but we didn't have the final number until uh, those two rates were uh, um, known and, and approved. So we're not actually asking for an approval of 750000 uh, today. Um, we will be asking for an approval at the final budget date um, and it will hopefully be somewhere around that number. Last year I think it ended up about $660,000 based on other things. So uh, again we're not looking for something specific today. You will have the opportunity to to know the exact number and approve the exact number when the other factors are known. Uh, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Um, so Mr. Mayor, I'm just wanting to you to Daniel or David, but um, that the um, sur supplemental uh, revenue, supplemental income that we receive uh, year end, like those dollars that we s receive from supplemental income, I know I've asked this a couple of times, Daniel, but just refresh my memory one more time. Will it, uh, is it, is it quite conceivable that we could allocate a portion of those funds towards the legacy fund in, in addition to the, uh, the you know the blended tax rate see what it comes in at uh, the supplemental income can that can that play a role with this number at all or is it is it all is it all um, directed towards uh, tax stabilization fund or is can a portion of funds go towards that amount the CAO yeah I, I'll answer that at the beginning of, of that question is, is uh, we currently do have a council direction on how the legacy fund is funded. Um, and one of the lines is, and any other way that, that council sees fit. So uh, currently it is uh, through this process, it's the OPG uh, grant uh, goes through there. So it is a council approved process. Uh, supplemental funds uh, are um, a, another source of income. Uh, they're used different ways in, in different years. If council wanted us to redirect the supplemental, um, and quite frankly, I'm not sure I, I would uh, agree with that, but I, I may. I, want to understand more, uh, we could uh, change um, count, you know, at Council's direction. That's fine. And can I just make one comment, Mr. Mayor, and I know we said this last year, and, and kudos to David for, you know, getting us on this right track with the, with the Legacy Fund. You know, we've got the uh, Lamont Sports Park coming up. It's going to be a multi, multi-million dollar project. We've got the, uh, the Y 
a rec facility uh, over the next year or two. And there's another project on the horizon, too, and that's the Southampton Town Hall, Southampton Library, that whole cultural hub on that, uh, on that corner in Southampton. So, and it's been quite evident over the years with uh, provincial federal governments not being able to you know, fund municipalities with, with infrastructure dollars. And uh, one way we're able to do these projects, you know, is through the legacy funds. So um, I'm certainly a huge supporter of, and I think you are too, Mayor, and uh, other members of council, um, where the legacy fund is something that, you know, we're, we're going to be able to get things done over the next uh, four or five six years. And uh, so I hope we, uh, I hope we continue to add to it and, and add to it in a, in a, in a, in a big way. On the blended tax rate, but um, it's, it's, this is basically, I think, how we're going to get things done. Yeah, important thing to remember about alternative sources of revenue into the legacy fund is that they are beneficial, but they're one-time contributions. If you if you flip the supplemental income into the legacy fund, that's fine, but it'll just be that dollar amount. The real bang that you get with the legacy fund is tax. Is the tax is the taxation increase because that compounds right it remains built into the budget year after year after year and that's how it grows quickly so you can add an extra two hundred thousand if you run into it through supplemental income or whatever and that's fine but it's the tax rate it's by pushing the tax rate up to that three percent that's where you get that's how you build this thing quick and be able to do some of those things uh councillor mayette thank you mr mayor um a comment and then i will move that we accept this um, the comment being, it, 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 I understand the philosophy behind it, and I, I agree. Obviously, I'm moving that we accept this, that, uh, that we're going to make contributions year after year based on a 3% tax rate. But it, it's, it's sort of backwards to the normal process where we're supposed to be the, the keepers of, of the responsibility to keep taxes as low as reasonably possible to deliver the services. Yet what we're saying is to the citizens, and it's being reported here today, is that you're going to get a 3% tax increase. It's like they go it around to all the other municipalities and they wait until the end product. And then there's a reports go out on the news saying can Carden raised by this much and Aaron is raised by this much. And it's all a number based on what their needs. Whereas what we're saying at the very beginning is it's going to be 3% and we're going to fit whatever we need inside that envelope and whatever's left over goes into this legacy fund. And it's, it's, it's prudent budgeting, but we, we do still get pushback from, uh, a certain segment of our population that has a hard time uh, dealing with a 3% tax increase. There's not everybody who is in that uh, mean average of $127,000 a year. So um, <clears throat> I would just hope that uh, that those members of our community can can see also the benefits of doing this and that uh, if they if they need help in, in making ends meet, that there are other uh, avenues available to them. I have um, spoken a lot about this in public venues in the last year, and it's really important to remember that we have a very low tax rate, and it will remain low, among the lowest in Ontario. After we raised it 3% last year, we were still well below not only most of the rest of Ontario, but much of Bruce County. Uh, not all of Bruce County, some have a lower tax rate than us, but we're the third lowest in the county after that 3% increase we took last year on the blended rate, and we will be again. The tax, the overall tax rate in Sogging Shores will remain consistently, I believe, even with 3% blended tax increases among the lowest in Ontario. So those folks who are living here, who are in that situation, continue to live in a community that taxes them at an extremely advantageous rate, uh, and will continue to. Um, but I also have said many times in public, and seen a lot of nodding heads, uh, that... Um, we could deliver to this right now. We could walk out of here and deliver zero percent. We could wipe our hands and say we've done that, and some people would probably cheer for us for doing that. But we will not build this community at zero percent. Just won't happen. And we got to build it because people are coming here, and and we have, we have one choice. We we have two choices. We can sit and do nothing and let let them wash over us, and eventually be out of everything and, and nothing happening, or we can build it and take the 3%. That's what we've decided to do. And I've made that argument lots of times, like I say, in lots of times in front of big crowds all year. And I get a lot of people saying, yeah, that makes sense. That's what you got to do. So I believe there's strong support in the community for that approach and the approach we're taking. And uh, will everybody love it? Will everybody think that we should do it? Probably not. But I think the majority of the public sees the wisdom in that. And so, uh, so I'm very I'm very comfortable supporting it. 
So, does, so you have a you made a motion to to accept the recommendation here, I guess, as written, and that's seconded by Councillor Grace. Uh, all right. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. So that moves on to 10.2, increase in IT security monitoring, and uh, we can uh, maybe ask the Director of Corporate Services to speak to that. So I sort of alluded to this a little earlier in, in the budget conversation. So we do have a, an external company who does provide 24-7 um, security monitoring on our computers. Um, so they have recommended that we're, they met with them in the... September, I believe, maybe early October, and they recommend updating. We have sort of an older version of the so uh, security software, and they are recommending a more sophisticated software. So they have given me a price. I did discuss it with our current IT staff after the meeting, and he feels there is some of it that we can uh, monitor somewhat in inside these walls. So I have estimated that there will be an extra 23000 annual costs. Okay, so we have a recommendation here. Uh, it's a $28,000 overall increase to the budget for an increase in IT security monitoring, and we'll take direction. Uh, Councillor Smith. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> um, so I understand that this recommendation has come from our current supplier. Was a competitive sourcing event uh, done? No, not at that time. That time was just main, just for budgeting purpose to get an idea of what the costing would be, and then we would... Okay, great. Follow the regular purchasing policy. Okay, Councillor Grace. Question. Um, does this, uh, you do mention that we purchase cyber insurance. The insurance doesn't help prevent the, the attacks, of course. Um, do, if we um, invested in this, would that have an effect upon our insurance rate? Uh, we can check when we do our renewal, but I it, it may, but I wouldn't suspect it would have a significant decrease in our rates. I uh, I would I'm going to support this uh, wholeheartedly. I I was at an event uh, earlier this year with a number of mun neighboring municipalities and their police service functions, and there was a municipality that was talking about the fact that they had been hacked into. And held ransom, and uh, and the advice that they got from one of the other municipalities was just pay them their bitcoins and get your system back. That's once they get a hold of you, then and that's what they want is a bitcoin transfer. And uh, and they said they had gone through it, and they said you're better off just paying the ransom. So anything that we can do up front, and at twenty eight thousand dollars, it was very small. That's a very small price compared to the amount they wanted for ransom to return the system to the municipality. Okay. Is there some direction from uh, Council on this one then? Councillor Grace? Councillor Grace moves to accept. Councillor Rich seconds. If there's nothing further, I'll ask then. Oh, there's something further? Nope. Then I'll ask all in favor. Carried. <laughs> all right, so there's one more of these, and it is the community incentive uh, program funding, and that's. Uh, the, that's interesting, community incentive program, but that's the community improvement plan it, to fund the community implementation of the community improvement plan. It's also CIP, but it's not called the community incentive program. It's a community improvement plan. Anyway, that's fine. So uh, the administration uh, suggesting $90,000 from the tax levy uh, to go into funding the implementation of the community improvement plan uh, through a community incentive program. This, uh, I'll start on this one. Uh, this, so we have um, been having uh, some productive discussions the municipality has uh, with developers to advance our overall goal uh, for affordable housing, uh, and which is one of the uh, um, things that are incentivized through the Community Improvement Plan, the development of affordable housing. I believe Council is going to have opportunities in 2020 to um, incentivize affordable housing, uh, truly affordable. Uh, housing uh, and this funding would allow us to provide those incentives uh, along that line. That and I know that that's a significant priority of this council, um, and I think that so I think uh, we would be well advised to fund this so that we will have the money available when that time comes to to uh, provide those incentives that will effectively be necessary to get those 
that housing built the way that in a truly affordable way. Um, my suggestion might be uh, that because I believe that we'll probably want to continue to fund um, this in years to come uh, that this might be an opportunity rather than tapping the tax levy to look at that supplemental tax revenue from 2019 which is likely going to be fairly significant much more than this uh, and we could use we could fund this from ta supplemental taxation from 2018 from 2019 um, monies which would normally go into the tax stabilization reserve but which we would just divert to this I I think that might be an opportunity to do this without driving the levy up I don't know if there's comments from the administration on that concept for you mr. mayor that's something we could consider uh, it is a funding source for the tax stabilization reserve uh, that has pressures on it as well uh, so I, I would want our uh, treasurer to have the opportunity to review the impact um, and make sure that that we're not underfunding some other area it might be a good approach anyway for us to think about doing this with pre prior year surpluses however they're generated um, and that would council would be a one-time decision every year and you decide how much you can afford to put into it but it would be a so anyway that would be uh, I wonder if we could approve this and, and ask the staff to come back with a recommended funding source not necessarily the tax levy the vice deputy mayor I'd just like to make that uh, that motion mr. mayor I think that's well said and I, I think the um, you know the whole community improvement program idea around the 90,000 for particularly affordable housing needs um, it's something this council's talked about and we'll be talking about a lot in the future and uh, so I I certainly like to put that motion on the floor to prove uh, with your wording that is in terms of uh, with staff come back with uh, ways methods to finance okay is there a seconder for that <coughs> concept uh, Councilor Rich any further discussion seeing none all in favor that's carried so that's it with section 10 now we're on to section 11 council requests so what we'll do I know each of these will have come from an individual member of council I don't know who I know who one of them is but I don't know who all the other them is so uh, what I'll do is uh, we'll just start with 11.1 .1 and maybe the councillor who made this request uh, can speak up and uh, and give us their case for this <coughs> Councilor Rich. Thank you, three, Mr. Mayor. Well, this is um, <clears throat> a soup that I kind of swim in. Um, currently, uh, I do development for minor hockey here, and I get a lot of requests from people um, looking to run summer camps um, in our community. One would be um, um, the Ontario Hockey Federation. Uh, they uh, run a multi sport camp um, through OMHA that is either soccer, baseball, and hockey related. Um, they'd love to run, um, they run in three different locations in Ontario. They'd love to run it here, but unfortunately, they, we don't, we're not um, open and available. There's lots of uh, different development opportunities, both. Um, one through figure skating, um, also uh, through through minor hockey, and uh, lots of uh, spring teams that that are always looking for ice. Currently, we only have uh, ice available in the region in uh, Owen Sound, Walkerton, and Godrich. Uh, we're a, a great middle location for a lot of these uh, spring teams or or um, hockey trainers to to come up and and use the ice. And and I would say as well that. And people of this community invested um, in, in building this facility and they currently uh, pay uh, operational costs every year in order to only have it open for part of the year I think that a reasonable argument can be made that um, we can get back a lot of the costs that would go into keeping it open for um, a, a small a longer period of time um, and giving better opportunity or better service to the people of the community the one uh, caveat that I would put in is it, um, it says um, apply a summer surcharge which I'm totally fine with as long as we don't price ourselves out of the market I don't want to see us put a surcharge in place that makes us so um, expensive that the users would be unwilling to use our, our facility okay uh, the deputy mayor and then I'll get Councillor Schreider thank you mr. mayor um, I am in agreement with Councillor Rich on this we've been looking at this for a long time we know that our our figure skating and minor hockey our summer leagues have grown um, as I've said over and over and over again, the number of kids we have in this community is huge, and the summer leagues would would gladly run a summer system out of here. 
I do also agree that the surcharge, we should look at the two facilities that run Summer Ice, Owen Sound and Godrich, and see what they charge and be just slightly under them. We, As Councilor Rich said, we don't want to overcharge. We don't want to be driving people to Owen Sound, to Godrich. If we're going to do it, we want them to come here. It's just like everything else. You build it, they will come. You make it reasonable, they will fill it. Mr. Schreiner? Thank you, through you. I think I mentioned this one um, as well, so I, I do appreciate, Jane, you guys looking into this one. Um, do you receive a lot of inquiries about summer ice or availability of ice, Jane, over the years? Um, I wouldn't say a lot of inquiries, but there's been a lot of conversation. Okay. It's a fair comment to say. Yeah. So I guess, too, is that um, when looking at this, would you think that you would try to implement in 2020, or do you think that it would actually take a year in order to plan like if you have off-season bookings here already, um, when would you see that this would take place? Um, to be fair, I particularly wanted to have something prepared for budget, actually, to present this time and and yeah. why has taken up a tremendous amount of our of our staff's time. Um, ideally, I would support having twelve month ice. Absolutely, I I have uh, a different reason for some of yours as well. Obviously, increased participation and capacity in our facility is important, um, but I also see what it takes from our staff and taking the ice out, and six or seven weeks later turning around and putting it back in. It, it it is very disruptive to our outside services and there is an impact to our outside services. So from uh, an opportunity of providing 12 month ice, I absolutely would support that. Um, it, and I have had our project manager looking at some, um, inquiring on some of the results that it would be to uh, the impact to our existing infrastructure. It will shorten the life of some of our infrastructure and we can certainly allocate that into uh, into a budget. That's that's not taking into account the added staff. There will definitely be a cost and an increase to the deficit by having 12 month ice, there's no doubt about it. Have we looked into those numbers in detail as of yet? No, unfortunately we have not. No, and, and fair enough as well. The other comment I wanted to make is that in order for a program like this, for for us, the decision makers, I guess, to say, yes, this is working, yes, it's viable for us to do, I don't think it's fair to do it in one season. I think that in order to get hockey schools that, that perhaps used to run here or that we want to attract back, sometimes they are booking one, two, three years in advance their locations. So if we're going to do this and we're going to give it a, a solid effort in doing it, I think we have to commit to a few years of doing this trial to see if it is viable for us in order to try and attract as many hockey schools and, and ICE users as well. So. And, and for council, council's uh, information, you need a valid business plan in order to make that decision, which we have not started that process in doing. Okay, Councillor, well, we'll get Councillor Carr and then Councillor Rich. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just curious as to, so this 50000 that we say it's going to use if we decide to extend this, does that account for employees and everything else that we're going to be losing that maybe switched over to your park side during the summertime and things like that? And then also, as Kristen kind of said there, is it going to do anything like for the ball hockey that runs here in the summertime? Are we going to be able to accommodate that in Southampton on their surface over there? Is there going to be conflicts? Or are we going to hinder some other sports that have really picked up and gained momentum here? We're fortunate to have two ice pads, so we can certainly transition some of those activities over to the Coliseum. Um, your first question, sorry, was um, the, the cost was really a ballpark figure, to be honest. Um, the, the preliminary numbers that we've done only for mechanical um, expenses, you, we can anticipate an additional $10,000 a year. We haven't sought out um, the cost for employees right now and what impact that does for outside. Do we transition some of our outside staff to inside who are experts in running the facility, consider um, a six-month contract for outside? Um, to be honest, it, even if we were to open for 12 months, do we are we truly open for 12 months, seven day operation, or do we start off on a four day operation? I, you know, those are some of the decisions that we need to make. Do, do not get um, pinned down on that fifty thousand dollars. We certainly just wanted to give you an indication of something that we could potentially be looking at. Okay, I just I didn't want to say that you know fifty thousand is what we were thinking it was going to cost, and find it was going to be a hundred thousand or something. That's all I was getting out with it. So, Councillor Rich. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so if we prove this right now, you're thinking in two years? Is, is that what I gathered, or is there any possibility it would be open next summer? 
I don't want to commit. I would I would ask council that you give us enough time to prepare a business plan so that we can get um, that research on paper so that you can make that decision. I don't want to say in two years. I don't want to say this year. Um, we have not done any preliminary work to this request right now is what I'm trying to say to you. The CAO has a comment. I think Jane's uh, uh, quite right in her comments. Uh, one of the steps that, that uh, we could advance is, is, and this is responding to Councillor Schreider's request, is w we, we could do some preliminary discussions with hockey schools saying, hey, if we're open, uh, would you be interested in 2020? Have we missed that opportunity? Or what's the latest date that, that you would be able to commit to us with? You know, certainly Jane has expressed a, a desire to, to advance it. Um, we will. We want it to be successful from the, the first year going forward. If those preliminary discussions, with the Rick Hines Hockey School says, "I'm already booked up. I'd love it, but I, you know, I can't commit to 2021." Well, that helps inform that the first year budget. Um, but certainly, we, we won't um, work to aim for 2021. I think we'll work to to try and get something for 2020 if possible. Uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, firstly, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that when discussing this budget with my eight-year-old son and discussing what the most important elements to improving the town of Sogging Shores were, he highlighted that having ice in the arena all year round was the most important thing. So uh, I can speak, certainly there's a large portion of our population that believe this is important. Um, but I do have one clarifying question in terms of we've mentioned a business plan. I'm seeing some numbers that we can all agree are uh, they're loose at this point. Um, but when, when we talk about putting together a business plan, will we be seeing a request for a consultant to put that together, or is that something that we intend internal resources to be putting together a business plan? No, we can certainly do that in-house. Um, we've got the capabilities. Uh, designating some time to get that done certainly would be our, our goal. Councillor Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that this request be withdrawn and that council be directed or the staff be directed to put together some preliminary numbers and a uh, business case to get a little more detailed uh, and, and accurate estimate okay apart from the withdrawing I, we can take that resolute we can take that resolution the direction uh, that staff be directed to uh, to create a business plan uh, for 12 month a year ice uh, at the community complex is that is that good enough you can't make a resolution to withdraw, only John could withdraw it, but you can make a resolution to do something different. Uh, so we have a resolution then that staff be directed to do a business plan for 12 month a year ICE uh, at the community complex. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Schreider. Okay. That's, it's getting late. Uh, so yeah, Councillor Mayat. That, that Council, motion me, that me, would, would read that so it's, it's to to advance a business plan by staff, but not necessarily approving the fifty grand. Is that what I'm hearing? The resolution on the floor does not approve fifty thousand dollars. It, it asks. It, it approves. It approves the council giving direction to staff to go ahead and form to write the business plan, yeah. which I kind of understand because uh, you know I I, and I and I hear the CAO and, our, and, the, and Councillor Schreider speak on this is that. We really don't know if Hines uh, Summer Hockey School or any other hockey school is prepared to come in this short notice. So it, it, I, mean, I guess I'm really, really a little reluctant to approve $50,000 until we see that business plan. So, anyways. So the resolution's on the floor for the business plan. Any discussion to the resolution? The Deputy Mayor. So that, sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. So that resolution will then mean that the ice would not be available for the 2020 season and wouldn't start till the 2021 season. There is no funding in the resolution, so you can't open the you can't have the plex open 12 months a year without some more funding, and there's no funding in the resolution. That the CAO. Yeah, on the sheet, the last line on the sheet, just for clarity, says if directed by council, staff will refine the estimate in time for the final budget approval. So what I'm hearing is, is if if directed by council, we will work towards uh, having something in place for the final budget approval, uh, which could mean uh, having the ice available in 2020. As we uh, work towards getting it for the final budget, we will extend some um, invitations to uh, uh, hockey groups and organizations to understand their appetite for 2020. Um, if there's very little uptake and, and thus no 
revenue uh, or very little revenue, uh, then it may be more prudent um, to delay it to 2021. But we, we'll do that work if directed by council and, and have something in time for the final budget. Just to clarify, though, the resolution is for a business plan. I don't think that you can produce a – well, maybe I'm wrong. Is the intention that you produce that you'll produce a business plan in time for final budget approval? Because the line is refining the estimate, which is not a business plan. That's just an estimate. So uh, – can you clarify that? Uh, final budget approval could be February, could be January. So, I, I, you know, we've got December. We can certainly do our best and get some numbers for council so that you can make an informed decision. So the resolution on the floor is that uh, staff be directed to develop a business plan for 12-year ICE at the Plex. Uh, we've just heard from staff that they believe they can do that in time for final budget approval. Nobody's shouting at me, so that seems to be what we can understand. So, uh, Councillor Rich. And then after this, we will vote on this resolution, is that correct? Uh, we, yes, we can. Based on a res We have no resolution on the floor on that, but I'm open to resolutions on the, to, from the Council on that subject. Sure, okay. So we have the resolution you've heard that that's before you right now. Is it? Does everybody understand it? All in favour? Opposed? That's carried. Did you have another resolution you'd like to make, Councillor Rich? So we've already done that. You want the money, though. So, so the resolution is to add that Council allocate fifty thousand dollars toward twelve months, twelve month of your ICE in the twenty twenty budget. It's been moved by the Councillor Rich, seconded by Councillor Smith. Discussion to the resolution, Vice Deputy Mayor. So, so Mr. Mayor, if we turn this resolution down, um, we will still have a second kick at the cat once the business plan comes to Council in January, correct? Council can spend money whenever it wants to, so yes. Anybody, other discussion to the resolution? Councillor Schreider? Thank you. Um, I, I'm for getting the business case, business plan in order for us to, to make that decision. And I think it does take staff a little bit of time to do that. If we can turn it around for December or January, February, I think that that's fantastic. This is a big decision that could cost 50 grand or it could cost $100,000. I think we need to see those numbers before we say, yes, we can go ahead with it. So if it takes staff a couple of months to get that information, it's good information and, spent, and time well spent. Um, when we're looking at things like operating costs, staffing, um, can we can we get the revenue in here um, in that building to make it viable? Um, I, my two cents anyway. Thank you. Thank you for the comments, uh, with Councillor Rich. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're really talking about seven weeks, right? Like it's it's going to be. I can't imagine it costing a hundred thousand dollars to keep that facility open for seven more weeks instead of closing it down the first of May and reopening it. Um, kind of the end of July, right? Or is that further than that? Did you say seven weeks, or how many weeks is it? Fourteen weeks. Okay. Well, then maybe that that does make a difference. I I do know that I have been contacted three years in a row by Bridget Wolf, um, asking to come back here. Um, OMHA. There 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 are people that are that are waiting and and looking and and you know it is prudent to put a business plan together, but I don't think that we're um, Forced to spend this money, we can relook at that at, after the business plan. I think it, it, it shows good intent to try and kind of move this forward. Okay, further comments, Councillor Smith. My comment would simply be that not approving this means uh, and, and makes the implementation of these funds much more difficult when we're talking about increasing a blended tax rate or not being able to have the discussion while we're having these negotiations about what that tax rate will be. So if we budget as if it were there, assuming that this estimate is in the ballpark, if it is removed based on an inefficient business case that doesn't prove prudent, then the legacy reserve is ultimately increased, right? So, I mean, in my, my, I will be supporting this, obviously, I've seconded the motion, uh, that pending a prudent business case, we move forward with this included in our budget for 2020. Councilor Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for the record, I'm, I'm in favor of 12-month ice at the Plex. I would just like to see, there's, there's a component to this missing. There, there's revenue to be gained and there's costs associated with having the ice. And 
the two of those will offset and what we're really talking about is what's the what's the deficit that the taxpayer is going to have to fund and without that information uh, it's it's difficult for me to just throw a number out there fifty thousand um, dollars I'm willing to wait and I'm willing to take the take the chance that come January or close to the time of the final approval if uh, as the mayor indicates we can we can add this at any time up until the point where the budget is approved uh, I'd be I'm fully uh, willing to do that and, and, and supportive of the concept I think it's a great idea and if we get enough uh, users whether it's hockey figure skating recreational skating behind us to do this then I'm all for it but at this point in time uh, I'm, I'm not going to support this uh, this motion but I do support the concept yeah, the Vice Deputy Mayor. And I, I support what Council Mayor is saying. I, I, I am 100% in support of 12 month ice, too. I think it'd be a great thing for this community. I just think we're missing the business case, the business plan. If, if, if it's proven that there aren't enough renters to come through for in this short notice for 2020, I, I'm, I'm sure not in favor of spending that 30, 40, 50, 60 grand. So until we see that, I think it's a little bit premature to prove approve the funding. So. I, I absolutely support 12 month ice. I think it'd be a wonderful thing to have. Let's wait and see what happens in January. We'll take, we'll take one more comment from Councillor Rich. And, uh, and, and I'll leave it at this. If you don't do it now and you start talking about it in January, everything's going to be, they're already going to be booked. But if it's approved at this point and, and you can reach out to users and say, it looks like because Council has approved this that it's going to run in the summer, then you'll start to get people booked. But if you wait until February, it's, you're, there's no way you're going to get anybody. I think the point is, and it has to be made clear, that we have no idea whether $50,000 will do it. So we have no idea whether we can even run the program just because we vote for 50000 at this moment. We, we, we don't know if, if, if that'll work or not. So, you, so it, it can't be taken as a promise to those groups that it's going to run. The only promise we can provide is when we, have a, when we know exactly what the cost is and allocate all the money to offset that cost. But today, without knowing, it, it can't be taken as any kind of guarantee. It's just a, it's just a number. And so, um, so I want to see the business case. I, I don't have any difficulty necessarily with fun, with uh, twelve month ice, but maybe my my support is is more tempered than others in that I want to see what it's going to cost first. Like I don't want to, you know, I want to, if it's two hundred grand, then my support's going to be a lot lower than it is if it's much less than that. So I, you know, I just don't know. I have no idea. So we got to find out. And uh, so, um, so I can't support the resolution, but I'm looking forward to hearing the business case back. So. The, well, so the resolution from Councillor Rich is that Council approves fifty thousand uh, dollars to uh, fund twelve month ice at the community complex. Fair enough, right? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. All right. So that moves us then on to uh, eleven point two cultural master plan and. Uh, come from you, like the, from the Vice Deputy Mayor. Well, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I presented this idea uh, last year. This this came at a request from a, a fair number of residents, um, particularly in, in, I'll say Southampton, um, but uh, there are residents in, in Port Ogden, Southampton Township, certainly would like to see this as well. Cultural master plan, we have, we have a recreation master plan, we have a facility study, we have a we have a parks and trails. We have lots, lots of studies, lots of reports that have, have done us well. We've done us good. We've, we've followed a lot of recommendations out of those plans. They're not collecting dust, which I do do disagree with when they do collect dust, as we all do. But um, the cultural master plan, uh, near and dear to many people in this community, from a, from the cultural heritage standpoint. And um, I did I did request this last year. It was deferred to 2020 budget. And. Um, Said yes, let's do that, and uh, with the insurances that we're going to give this really serious consideration this year. So, but Mr. Mayor, I understand maybe there's some new information though that I didn't know about, um, and you, I, I was hoping you could comment on it, and that's that uh, Bruce County um, will be conducting a, a cultural study, which I was not aware of just till yesterday today. So I was wondering if you may be able to comment on that for me. Yeah, that's right. And I su I support the concept too of doing cultural. In fact, it's pretty important that we do it. Um, from a planning standpoint, along a number of other things, we have uh, a lot of cultural resources in across the county and in this community that uh, we need to understand better uh, to plan the community better. Uh, and um, and so I supported the concept at Bruce County. 
uh, a couple of months ago of developing uh, what they're calling a cultural action plan, uh, which is effectively a cu cultural master plan, uh, just a different set of terms. And that work is underway now. It's been funded. It was funded actually using the money that we got from the province, that 600 and the efficiency funding. Um, at the county, and so that work is underway. Uh, there's not many details yet, in that they're, they're just in the process of hiring the consultant. So, uh, so they haven't they haven't even got the consultant hired yet. So, uh, but they do have a bit of a terms of reference and stuff building up. What I would suggest that council might want to do is because I think that there's a, a, a strong possibility that even if this doesn't totally cover our needs, that perhaps we could dovetail with it uh, and maybe um, use some of what's being generated by it to. Uh, to reduce the cost to ourselves and and uh, uh, you know maybe help us get this done, that we should before approving this, let's find out a little bit more about what the county's doing. Uh, it's possible that what we're suggesting here could be completely redundant, in which case we wouldn't want to do it at all. Or it's possible that they're doing some things that we might be thinking about doing, and we might want to do more, and we could get a better sense of what that might look like. So um, let me. Uh, before the end of the budget process, for certain, we will have a very clear sense of what the county is going to do and what they're not going to do on this, and we can uh, we can revisit. So, so, Mr. Mayor, what you're saying is uh, that that you know the fifty thousand dollars we were looking at could very well be that who knows? I mean, maybe it's thirty thousand, maybe it's forty thousand dollars of the work that we had intended to do that could quite conceivably be covered under the the county culture master plan, and with the dovetailing term you used, maybe we maybe we could add ten. Fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to that amount um, at a later date once you have more information. So I'm I'm good with that. I know Councillor Grace and I had long notes prepared for this uh, to speak to the uh, improving this fifty thousand. But to, just one last comment I wanted to make: the efficiency funding. Have our dollars all been uh, spoken for, or allocated for 2020, and is that a potential source of funding? Since the county is using their funding for the cultural master plan, cultural study. Is it something that, uh, if dovetailing proves to be the prudent way to go, could we potentially find ten or fifteen or twenty thousand out of that fund? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, that that efficiency funding still has a, a number of hundreds of thousands of dollars still available in it. Uh, council has been um, receptive to the ideas that, that that staff have brought, and we haven't brought many. Uh, we want to spread it out for important priorities. So yes, it's available. Just, I, I think I'm looking forward to hearing more information back from the county. Mr. Mayor, thanks for the information today. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I, I'm interested in your report from the county and um, pleased that that initiative is being taken. I, I think that um, the idea of a cultural master plan is perhaps hard for people to grasp because it is so broad. It covers so many aspects of our, of our lives, of our culture. It covers so many things when you start looking up what definitions of culture are. Um, they're, they're just, you know, it covers all kinds of things, our food, our language, our religion. Um, but I think, you know, the bottom line about why I think whether we invest more money on the backs of what the county um, ends up presenting to us. Um, I think that we can also make a very good case that investing in uh, trying to assess what our cultural resources are, um, to see how we can use those resources to provide more opportunities, uh, not just um, for the economic benefits, and there's there sure are lots of economic benefits to, um, you know, if you look at the festivals that we have in our in our town, if you look at uh, um, the money that's brought in by people coming. People uh, don't come, as important as our roads and water infrastructure are, the people flock down to the Southampton flag to see the, the Friday night sunset <coughs> piper. Um, they're there for culture, that's what brings not just visitors here, but that's what what induces people to invest in our community as residents. Um, and generationally, you know, that you see people coming back um, generation after generation to be in our community because of those, uh, of that cultural investment that we have. Um, and it makes our community more livable. 
So um, I'm excited to see what the county has to say, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing how we can use that to enrich our community. So, um, so what we'll do is commit to coming back with some more information uh, um, before the end of the budget process. Hopefully, long before the end of the budget process, and we can make a discuss. We can have another discussion about this at that point. And the other thing we can do, and, it, and maybe we can give uh, just direction by consensus to the administration to consider alternative funding sources for this, if it was something that council wanted to fund. All right, that clear enough. So we'll defer discussion on that one. Uh, so there's 11.3, the uh, increased contribution to the tree sale. Uh, to Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Do you need a motion to defer or just a motion? I did it by consensus unless you're, oh, that's unless you're no, dissatisfied that's with that. That's good enough for me. Okay. Yep. Um, so increased contribution to the tree sale uh, for $5,000. Whose uh, bright idea was this? Yeah, okay. A little slow today. No, that's okay. I, I know I'd sent two in uh, with regards to trees uh, and that. So there's obviously a lot of success with this program um, and, and talking with, uh, with the organizers of this as well and through Amanda as well. Um, I, I just think it's a great program and that if we can uh, find a little bit of money to contribute and match some more dollars and continue with the success of this program, I just think it would be great. Are we still, uh, I don't know who can answer this sitting here, but are we still drawing funds off the NWMO's uh, um, $400,000 and and reserving that toward trees? And and if so, how much of that, how much of money is kicking around there and how much of it have we spent? Thank you. We have that still. We've, it's been an administrative um, back and forth trying to figure out how to spend the money in the years past. and. We can't do that. That's what we figured out. But what we had been doing is allocating road reconstruction tree replantings for that. But we, uh, in 2018, never actually asked finance to reallocate it. So we still have the full 14000 A lot of that money right now is going to go on Bruce Road 25 to replace those cedars, uh, Grosvenor Street, uh, the trail along that piece. Um, there's going to be some spent on Victoria Street. So you'll see a bunch of that 14000 spent this year and then the interest I think you had a the plan for five years so I think this would be the last year of spending that interest 2020 would be the last year to, to spend that interest and uh, parks Frank has plans to put some of them in, in the parks this well we were going to do it this year but the snow came so it'll be in 2020 do we know how much we're generating annually on interest from that like what we're it's not a huge amount eh? it's not a huge amount. And in five years we have 14,000 so. so it's about 3,000 a year less than that just wondered if it was something we could council could resolve to direct that funding going forward since that's coming to an end anyway we could direct that funding the reserve the the uh, interest earned on the NWMO reserve to support the tree sale just a thought uh, council grace well, I would support this uh, for $5,000. Um, everything I read indicates that one of the best ways of, um, of uh, fighting carbon emissions is to plant trees, uh, not to mention the fact that um, it just makes our town more beautiful. Um, so I, I think this is, um, this is something I would support. Okay. Can we get uh, some direction then? Got a few ideas out there. What do you think? Councillor Grace, make the resolution for the five. Yes. Um, can we? Um, I guess um, based on uh, the director's comment about the fourteen thousand, would there be three thousand from that to put towards this, or is that hard to predict at this point? If for for next year, I'm not sure. Um, Selfishly, I would like to spend all that there is today on the trees for those three projects that I, I mentioned. They're ones that had high impacts on, on trees. Then we could, uh, so why don't we go this route? Um, if we can get some approval from council that they want, that we want to spend $5,000 a year on the tree sale, the administration can come back to us and tell us how to fund it. 
So is there, can we get a resolution to support the $5,000 for the tree sale? Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by the Vice Deputy Mayor. And so this is on the understanding that we will get a report back with some funding options. Okay? All in favor? That's carried. Ah, so the next one is me. Surprise, surprise. The, um, so uh, we heard uh, today that, um, you know, we've seen a significant increase in revenues now or in um, tipping fees this year. Uh, we've seen, a, we've seen, we have heard that we've seen a significant increase in the amount of commercial uh, waste going directly to the landfill and we're seeing and we're getting more and more money all the time for that we've increased tipping fees over the years many times we increase it all the time um, uh, but we're also seeing an increase in the residential demand on the landfills a significant increase and it's just going to grow because we're going to have 5,000 new residents over the next 10 years uh, but bag tags remain stubbornly at two dollars a piece and there's a reason for that and it's political, right? It's very difficult to raise bag tag fees. Uh, and that is the fundamental failure of bag tags. It's not that, uh, it's, not that it's a bad system. It's a great idea. Uh, but it's proved that it doesn't, it's not effective at doing what we need it to do to fund our growing, the growing cost of landfill. Um, we need uh, residences to pay, uh, and uh, on an ongoing basis, uh, a certain amount, and we need that to be marked to inflation, so that we can continue to grow. A lot, we can continue to grow that um, funding to keep up with the cost of actually running the landfill site. So my view is, as I've expressed to you before, is that um, we should uh, do a bit of a do a bit of a reconfiguration. Make make one bag one one bag of garbage free. And add this amount, fifty-five dollars. Uh, no, sorry, add uh, should be raised from fifty-five, so about forty-five dollars. Uh, about add about forty-five dollars to the landfill fixed fee. So everybody gets a free bag of garbage every week for forty-five bucks a year. Basically, less than half. It's fifty percent. You're getting. You're getting. If you wanted to buy a bag, a bag every week, you'd have to pay a hundred. You have to pay a hundred and four dollars. We can give everybody a free bag for forty-five dollars and recover all that. Recover all that cost. So, and we can mark that to inflation. So th from this day forward, that keeps going up and helps us to defray inflationary costs of running the landfill site. At the same time, we dramatically increase the price of bag tags. We go from two dollars to to two twenty-five to I think we head towards three dollars at least, maybe even more. Uh, so as to disincentivize overuse of the landfill site. To, so, and so that bag tags can continue to go up and, and everybody in the community recognizes that we need to reduce, reuse, and recycle more and we need to incentivize that. So every, every bag you put out beyond your free one a week, you pay more than you pay right now. Uh, so, that, so I think that, and that also solves another couple of other problems that we've been observing with, we've seen since we implemented bag tags that um, dumping in bins, people's bins across, like people who have commercial bins, we see more unlawful dumping. We see more unlawful dumping on roadsides. You know, we've seen that we've, that's been reported ever since it was first implemented. And I should note that I was a big supporter of implementing pay as you throw. I voted for it. And, and the reason why I may be more comfortable with this than some is I remember when we didn't have it, when it was on, on the tax levy. And we created this. And I was here when we did that. Uh, and I thought it was a pretty good idea. And I still do, and I and and it was, it was a great attempt to do something smart, uh, and and um, I just don't think it's functional uh, to do what we needed to do, because we need to continue to um, keep up with inflation and pay for this system. And we're just doing this. We're doing this study this year to talk about expansion. That ain't going to be cheap, you know. We're going to do that study. Wait till we have to pay to actually expand the site. The cost of all this system is going to go up and up and up, and we need our we need to be able to mark our revenues to go up with it. So, so the loss of revenue is uh, in this page is a little bit misleading because yes, you lose four hundred one thousand dollars in bag tags, but you make it up by charging forty five dollars additionally on the fixed fee, and that's 
that's a fifth, that's less than half of what it would cost people to throw all that away. So I, I get that uh, it's a big change and that council may not be may not be comfortable with doing it today. I don't know, but uh, but I keep I put it in here because I think it's something that we really need to consider strongly to make this to make this system end up being revenue neutral going forward, and so that residential houses are paying their fair share going forward of of the overall costs, and that we're not dumping it all onto people heading to the dump and, and, and ultimately contractors and by, by jacking up their rates on an ongoing basis and not touching bag tags, which is what we've been doing for a very long time. And, uh, and I think all users should, should be paying on an increased basis going forward. So those are my thoughts, and I'm happy to hear what your thoughts are. The Deputy Mayor. A couple questions. Mr. Mayor, first off, if we raise it 45, do we have a has Daniel done the work to tell us what that would bring in in revenue? So that that amount, that forty-five dollars per household, is calculated um, by what it would. That's the amount it would take to recoup four hundred and one thousand in revenue. Okay, so the devil's advocate says the people that go away for the winter are going to be upset because they're gone for three to four months. They're not going to be able to recoup that fee while they're gone. They still only get one bag per week. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's part of why you get the savings is because some people are not uh, are not throwing a bag of garbage away every, every week. Uh, but they do benefit by being able to do that any time they're here. So the truck goes by their house every week, whether they're here or not, and we pay for that. And so, uh, so when every, any time they show up, they can put a bag of garbage out and and they can use their free bag or not, but I, but that's uh, that's certainly that's certainly that's why it's only forty five dollars rather than one hundred and four dollars. I anticipate. Councilor Rich, to you, Mr. Mayor. So that means the revenue that we bring in for the forty five dollar household increase is four hundred one thousand dollars. And did you say that you're interested in well as increasing the cost of a bag tag as part of that? Was that what you said? That, in my view, would be part of the deal. We, so two things. The, the landfill fixed fee gets put in the fees and charges bylaw and marked to inflation. Every year, the, the landfill fixed fee goes, by, goes up by whatever our inflationary increase of all of our fees and charges is. And the other thing is bag tags increase. Um, my, my view would be 25 cents maybe in, 20, 20, in 2020, and, but we would, we would do it. We would just increase it by 25 cents a year for maybe four years. Uh, so that we had a significant increase uh, to disincentivize overuse of the landfill. Uh, Councillor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a couple of questions. Um, when you started this program, um, was it intended, it's called a bag tag. It was a revelation to me this year that actually it's a can tag. It's not just a bag. So if you have one tag per full garbage can, that's fine. So um, was it, yeah, did it start off with just, was it, was it always the same idea? The way it is now is the way it's always been. Okay. Um, I, I would like to see um, this deferred until the waste management study is completed. And one reason I, I'd just be interested to see, I think, attitudes towards recycling, trash disposal probably have changed. I'm, I'm hoping they have changed significantly since this was started in what year? 2008 or 2009? So, so, I mean, I, I'm... Uh, we increased it every year for five years, and last year was the last of the increase of okay. the levy, so I think it must have been... This will have been the sixth year of this being in place. Increased the, bag tags? Levy, no, of the levy going oh, the up levy. to 55. Oh, I see what you mean. But I don't know when the bag tags were before that. A long time. Yeah. Um, I, I guess what I'm saying is I, I think um, I'd be interested in seeing people's attitudes uh, that maybe I'm assuming that the waste management study is going to be doing something about behavior of residents and uh, because I know I have a number of people who tell me as residents, you know, we put out one bag a month 
you know, because we we compost and we recycle and reuse and whatever, and that's good news. Um, and and I guess I'd like to see that be part of the study going forward. Thanks. Okay, uh, the vice deputy mayor, and then council mayor. Mr. Sorry. Mr. Mayor, through you to Amanda. Amanda, the waste management uh, study, will it, will it include public consultation, surveys, questionnaires, public meetings, or is this just a consultant's report that will involve no community input? How's it, how's it work? What, what would be the terms of reference for that waste management study? Through you, what we are proposing is uh, working, GM Blue Plan is working through their draft right now, and then we would bring to a public meeting in front of council their final draft report. The public meeting for the final draft report, mm -hmm. but, but the uh, if it, a review of this model will be included in that study. So, so you know, sometimes you meet upstairs in the in the hall, we have public meetings, people come in and have their say, and there's questionnaires online, and will there be any of that? We hadn't planned on it. Um, we can, I can go back to the consultant and see about doing that for this one. We, this one was, is one that's pretty straightforward, so we were just planning the normal yeah. uh, class I, I, EA I mean, process. Yeah. I kind of like to hear what the community's got to say about it. I, I'd be prepared to put a motion on the floor that we uh, delay this to the, you know, to the completion of the management study, the waste management study, in spring of 2020. Mr. Mayor, I think your arguments are very strong, and I, I get it. You know, we just voted on decision, a lot smaller scale perhaps, but delaying um, fifty thousand dollars of spending for uh, summer ice till we we see, we find more see more information. And um, I, I, for one, would like to see a little bit more information on this before we make that final decision. And so I would like to put a motion on the floor that we do uh, defer this decision till um, well, I guess we'll probably be moving into twenty twenty one budget then, but uh, move to uh, you know. So we see the results of the um, of the waste management study, uh, which is to be completed in 2020. So I'm not really prepared to make a decision until after we see the results of that study. So it's been moved by the Vice Deputy Mayor that we defer this till after the completion of the waste management study. Is there a second for that? Seconded by Councillor Schreider. Is there more discussion? Did you ever want a comment you want to make, uh, Councillor Maya? I did. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> was, that out, was that out loud? <laughs> um, I was going to... <laughs> what I was going to say was uh, the, and Cheryl, uh, Councillor Grace alluded to it, is that the bag peg has a, an immediate effect on people's behaviors because if they generate less garbage, they have to buy less bag tags. That's what I like about the bag tag system is it encourages uh, recycling and reduction of waste. And the second thing I wanted to say was um, by doing what's being proposed here, um, you're, you're transferring all of that burden onto the home the property owners whereas there's lots of people in the community who are are renters and for them it's just a it's a win for them whereas the the property owner who currently may not buy bag tags for his tenants um, has to pick up the cost so uh, I understand your the the philosophy behind it and there are some arguments to be made that in, to move in this direction but I think at this point in time I can't support this and I would support the yeah. thing that's coming out of the Councillor Rich. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Um, I can support it. I, I see. I don't see any financial uh, negativity to it as far as the community goes. Right now, uh, we're trying to create landfill planning. We need more money to expand the landfill. Um, and if we increase the price of bag tags associated with it, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that the idea behind um, bag tags to... Um, an increase the amount of recycling probably uh, is valid, but but I from from being on Basra, I'm not exactly sure if it's effective. I don't know if two dollars and is a, is enough to um, to restrict somebody from throwing out a tin can in their in their garbage bag, um, and I think that that the people at the landfill site would probably. Um, say that's exactly true. Um, I think that if it recoups the costs and we can create more revenue to expand our, our landfill and then still by increasing the cost of that bag tag um, in, in, increase the likelihood that people may recycle, then, then I think that that's a, that's a win for everybody. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I played devil's advocate advocate at the beginning but I too agree with the plan um, the one thing you hear from a lot of people is why do I have to buy a bag tag why don't you just put it on the bill by doing this I think it'll majority of the community will 
embrace it if we move the bag tags up an incremental amount to 225 so instead of getting 10 for 20 you're getting uh, 8 for 20 it's going to be increase the revenue as well so I do fully support the initial plan okay so we have a resolution to defer uh, oh Councillor Smith sorry sorry thank you and through you uh, I agree fundamentally with the two comments that were just made across the table however uh, in saying that two dollars is not a disincentive I would argue that 225 is not either that will not disincentivize people uh, to to not throw out their tin cans what I would comment is that change is slow and uh, to to have folks adopt this from a change management only to potentially change the model as a result of the waste management study I think we would frustrate our users um, what we need is is bigger than disincentivizing a bag a week for for climate change we need to do something more uh, and I think that I'm hopeful that our waste management plan will be part of that solution so with that I can't support this motion okay so we have the resolution to defer till after the waste management study we had a good discussion all in favor of the resolution opposed I appreciate I see how you voted Cheryl that's uh, uh, carried all right so I could I could have played with that Cheryl but I decided not to the uh, so the uh, so that moves on to uh, item 12 other uh, requests uh, and pages 160 to 170 uh, so that's uh, the first one is 12.1 uh, uh, an increased grant to the Saugeen Rail Trail Association as a request from the association for an increase uh, $5,000 to cover snow removal of the newly paved section of uh, the Saugeen Rail Trail. So we'll take direction from uh, Council. Uh, the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I need to know what's going to go on with it. So they want to clear the paved portion of the rail trail. So that'll go from the 10th, 6th, all the way to River Street, is it? Is that as far as the pavement goes? Yeah, that's the paved section. And they're going to be looking after clearing it. Is there any, are there legalities that go with this that we have to worry about by clearing that path? Can, uh, Councilor Schreider can probably answer that question, so we'll get Councilor Schreider to answer. Um, thank you, and through you. So originally when this request was made from the from the uh, Saugeen Rail Trail it was for snow removal since then I've I've we've checked with our committee as well is that they 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 want to make the re the request to increase their grant for five thousand dollars but not specifically for snow removal that they're finding that the cost for maintaining the trails purchasing equipment all of the things that they do for all the kilometers of trails plus they also do go outside of the boundaries of the rail trail itself and help out in other projects is that they would like just the increase of five thousand dollars without the discussion of snow removal at this time okay so we had the yeah. okay. okay so uh, councillor Mayette wanted to make a comment uh, councillor Mayette I will not be supporting this. Okay. Further comments? Mr. Mayor, yeah. Deputy Mayor, sorry. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, um, Councillor Schreider and Councillor Carr, uh, the five thousand dollars you said it's, it's for other use to increase the grant. Then, but will it? Will that section of trail be uh, be maintained in the winter time with snow removal? Then, or not? Is it? Or is this snow removal come right off? It's nothing to do with it. Will it, where will it, is a plan to get that done this winter? So it, the information that we have is that they've purchased a groomer, so no different than any other piece of equipment that they use to maintain the trails. Um, and they have not, through any of our discussions, I don't believe that they've committed to removing snow on that section of trail. They would like to have the conversation either with the municipality or to even attempt to do it themselves, but we haven't had that that conversation at our table is that fair Matt or am I yeah sorry just to be clear but yeah. I, I don't believe that the groomer that they've just purchased is for the purpose of snow grooming it is meant for trail maintenance so that we don't miscommunicate that okay and I think it's important to communicate to, to the rail trail association that if uh, changes the level of service are considered for the rail trail and any section of the rail trail snow removing grooming these things that that really has to be approved by this council so uh, they should not commence snow removal uh, on their own. 
they should come here and we should approve that. Uh, so that's important to remember. And uh, if if this uh, five thousand uh, dollar is approved, it will be done so on the understanding that this is just a general increase to the levy or to the to the grant, I should say, to the rail trail, uh, and uh, and that any changes to the service level provided by the Rail Trail Association will be subsequently approved by this council. Uh, Councilor Carr. Sorry, and just to follow up with that too, they, they will be coming to council, I believe, in December to, to clarify where they will be spending this extra money that they're asking for. Uh, like, again, I just want to make it clear that maybe this should have been changed before it hit, but the, it's unfortunately the way it, it hit, and it's not the way it's intended to be used. From what we've sat through and discussed on it, and at this time, I don't anticipate that they were planning on doing any kind of snow removal this year. Okay. Yeah, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm just wondering, um, you know, rather than approve or disapprove, they are coming Monday night, actually, you're correct. I think it's the 25th. I heard found out just yesterday. So I think they're coming on the, uh, to make a presentation from Saugan Rail Trail, and they're talking about their, achieve, their accomplishments, um, I think, this past year and what they're planning for next year. So this is what I did. I just was talking to a member yesterday about it. But So can we maybe perhaps we could hear their presentation first Monday night? Yeah, we can. Uh, if it's a fair, we could def we could defer this uh, until uh, we've seen uh, the presentation from the Rail Trail Committee. Is that fair? Okay, consider it deferred. So uh, that moves us on to twelve point two, the request from the Huron Shores Hospice for eight thousand uh, dollars to uh, support their fundraising uh, for the hospice uh, uh, pr uh, proposed to be funded by the tax levy. There's, uh, you know, you could uh, well, be open to direction. You could, you don't have to fund this from the tax levy. If it's one time, you could look at other alternatives. Uh, but uh, I'll take direction. Now we'll start with Councillor Mayette. I've, I've skipped him too many times, so I'll start with him this time. I would move that um, we direct staff to come back with some funding options for this before we make a decision on it. Councillor Grace, you had a comment? Thanks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got. I've I guess I have a question for maybe, I don't know, community services. I don't know who would handle this, but um, what is our um, policy or record of um, support to charitable organizations? Because I think, you know, we have so many fine charities. This is a very fine charity. Um, how do we start prioritizing and choosing which ones we support. Um, $8,000 is a significant amount. Um, and then, you know, how, how do we say no to somebody else um, who is just a wonderful charity as well? So I, I'm wondering what kind of um, record we have of doing that, and are there in-kind contributions we could offer somehow, maybe, um, a rent-free space for an event or something like that? I'll speak to it. I think uh, we um, you know, we have done contributions in the past. If you think about that hospital foundation, right, for the, you know, there was one where we uh, contributed uh, $50,000 over four years, a year uh, to that. Um, uh, we've, we've made charitable contributions we made a charitable kind of small much smaller one but to the Humboldt Broncos a couple of years ago right we we've done lots of things like that so it's not unheard of uh, for us to do that I th and I think I think council needs to prioritize those every year uh, I think that's really the only practical way to do it the county has uh, gone a route over the years of actually having con having a long list of consistent things that they give to um, and uh, um, my view is that, you know, the better thing to do is to make ad hoc decisions every year based on the funding available and and what our contributions can be. I think it, we could attempt to establish some sort of policy, but it, we would just be tempted to break the policy when a really good cause came in, right? So uh, I think that um, – I think we just have to assess it uh, for what it is uh, and uh, either make the contribution or not. It is a one-time requested contribution. Uh, it could be funded – uh, through tax stabilization, for example, or something like that. But it's, um, I think we're just going to have to make a call on it. So I guess that's my question is, uh, what is your call at this point? So the Vice Deputy Mayor. Well, 
Mr. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, so, uh, pardon, excuse me. Yeah, the, so the um, Councillor Mayette has uh, suggested that, I guess we suggested that we approve uh, the funding, but but that we ask staff to come back with alternative funding sources. Is that what you're suggesting? Second that so it's seconded by the Vice Deputy Mayor. Any further discussion? All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? That's carried. So that moves us then on to an increased contribution to Saugeen Mobility. We covered this. We already have agreed to fund this. So that's not, that's been taken care of. Uh, 12.4 is a sponsorship of the 2020 Rotary District Conference at Unifor. There hasn't been a dollar figure attached to this. You'll see in the letter, uh, which was sent to us, um, some different levels of funding, uh, which we could to make and so we'll you can read that and make your I'll take direction the deputy mayor thank you mr. mayor the rotary clubs of soggy shores both Port Elgin and Southampton are major players uh, in this town uh, they do a lot for our community our recreation facilities are built uh, work with them I would suggest that we do the platinum sponsorship because they give to the town and it's time we can help them give back and what we give back will come back to us tenfold that's a motion uh, uh, for $5,000 to be uh, contributed to the, uh, um, pardon me, the Rotary District Conference. Is... Okay, thank you. You'll make sure to submit that in writing at the right moment, I assume. Further discussion? Uh, well, I guess it's been moved. Is there a seconder? Uh, seconded by Councillor Grace. Discussion? Councillor Grace. Um. I uh, support the Deputy Mayor's statement. Um, not only um, do our Rotary Clubs um, contribute a tremendous amount uh, in terms of their, um, their work, uh, their monetary contributions to various um, parts of our parks and things like that, but this is going to be a big event, and our businesses are going to really... Um, benefit from this, I think, in a significant way. So um, I think it's wonderful that this event is coming to our town. Further comments? Can I suggest uh, that um, we, that this being a one-time expense, that we resolve to fund it from the tax stabilization reserve? Is that good enough with the mover and seconder if we amend the resolution to that extent? So the resolution is that uh, $5,000 uh, be uh, granted to the Rotary Club to fund the uh, to tour their district conference and that be funded from the tax stabilization reserve. There's nothing further. All in favor? That's approved. Somebody call Dave back in here. in there who knew there's always another door in this place okay so the uh, final one is a uh, request it's a letter uh, from the women's house serving Bruce and Gray um, and they're looking for a donation of an unspecified amount uh, from the town of Saugeen Shores, uh, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Mr. Mayor, this is a very wor worthwhile cause, obviously, and uh, the Women's House do fabulous work for our area, and um, I, I see that they would be uh, very willing to attend a, a future council meeting to make a presentation to outline their, their goals for next year, what they're looking for, for funding perhaps. So I think uh, that would be a, a nice invitation to extend to the uh, contact person or persons from the Women's House. Have uh, them come just like the Southern Retro Association are coming Monday night, maybe in December or early January. The uh, Women's House can come and make a presentation. Let's know what they're looking for. So the Vice Deputy Mayor is suggesting that we defer this until after we, uh, pending in, um, our hearing from the Women's House. Is that the uh, Deputy Mayor? We know the good work that they do. Um, I just think if they come, we should have a value. 
I think we need to, if we're going to do this, we need to assign a value today. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what do we give to the hospice? <laughs> hey, I'd say. Uh, Councilor Grace. Well, I, I can provide maybe a little bit of um, a guideline. I know that the Canadian Federation of University Women, a group I belong to for Southport, um, that we um, donated $1,000 this year, and that was basically sponsoring a room um, that is used for, you know, a particular purpose, and, and uh, members of our organization uh, did a tour, and it is a fantastic organization. So, I mean, that gives you an idea of uh, $1,000 goes a long way, um, and I would support $1,000. In some cases, it's important to remember that the municipality can be of more help to an organization like the Women's House uh, in other ways other than just cash every year. I, I can't recall now, maybe, I don't know if Mike, you remember, or if somebody sitting around the table remembers, the Women's, the women's House opened the, their uh, centre across the way here, and the municipality provided assistance at that time. Um, I can't remember if it was cash or if we deferred fees or what we did. We So we waived fees and did things like that. So, um, you know, we're able to provide support in different ways. And sometimes, uh, you know, if you establish an annual contribution, uh, you might find that, you know, we have an opportunity later on to help in a more substantial way to get to build something or do something. So I don't know. I I guess I just, I might, I might caution against getting into a situation where we're going to just start giving a thousand bucks a month to this charity or that charity. I think we might be better to say, look, you know, perhaps there's other ways the municipality can support your services or help you to do different things um, in the community, just like we've done before. Uh, and we're stand ready to do that, uh, whether, whether it's this group or Habitat for Humanity or any number of them, right? Um, I'm, I'm okay with what the Vice Deputy Mayor is suggesting, just to hear from them. Uh, and uh, um, if there's some specific cause or something in particular they're raising money for that we think is going to benefit the municipality, we can think about it. But if there's not, maybe we can, uh, just by expressing our support and and, uh, and being standing ready to help in the ways we've helped in the past, might be good enough. Councillor Grace? Clarify, I, I wasn't suggesting a contribution of $1,000 a month. It was a one-time contribution. If I said that, I didn't. I didn't take it that way. I, I just mean an annual contribution. That's sort of what you get into with those things. We don't do a lot of those things. We don't support a lot of charities with an annual cash contribution, right? We do. A, we're sort of. We have more heft sometimes to do other things. Just my thoughts. Anyway, I don't know. Is there other direction? Do you, do you want to specify a dollar figure right now, or do you want to wait and hear from them, or whatever you want? Well, Mr. Mayor, I mean, they might need five thousand dollars. They might need twenty-five hundred. What's the amount? I, 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 I like, kind of like to hear the presentation of what's here, but it's good to have people up to the podium and share with council what they're up to and good things they're doing this year and next year. And, uh, and at that point in time, we can get a better feel of recommendation. Of okay. All right. So I think we have general agreement. We'll, we'll wait and hear from them. Okay. Okay. So that moves us on to uh, 13 fees and charges and uh, the draft fees and charges schedules. I don't know, are there comments that you would like to make, Dan or David or Sue? Nobody? Okay. So they're there for your uh, information. I think what I would like to do, and, I, and uh, it's up to council, obviously, but uh, I think we don't need to go through an extended process. The ideal thing would be to get these approved and implemented. So uh, I think a resolution today from council, uh, if council's prepared to do it, to adopt this, uh, we could move it directly to council uh, rather than go through the committee of the whole. Um, you know, that would move it forward. So, but that, that depends on your appetite to do so. So I guess I'll open the floor to questions or comments around this schedule, these schedules. Uh, Councilor Schreider. Thank you. Just, just one question through you uh, with regards to ice rentals. If we go ahead with summer ice program, can we reintroduce uh, a fee in charge that's not listed here at that time? Yeah, council can always amend the fees and charges any time mid-year. Uh, the deputy mayor. Thank you, Mr. Answer. You. This is a question for Jane. Jane, our holiday ice rentals. Can you, off the top of your head, I know this is tough. Sorry, but can you think of what our percentage of usage is during the holiday for rentals? 
Sorry? At the Plex and Coliseum, ice rentals, sorry. For, the, for ice rentals? Yes, just during I, the holiday. I believe it's, it's, I know Lisa's back behind us. I know it's quite high. We do, there's a premium for it, obviously. Um, I couldn't tell you, honest, to be honest right now. Um, we have a lot of Tim Horton skating during the course of the, the two weeks holidays, but um, compared to the other ice, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure I can get that for you. If you can find that, just mm -hmm. I'd like to know the if we're above 50%, above 70%, below 50%, that would help Certainly. me indicate which way I'd like to move on. Sure. Further comments? I would uh, just make a comment. I was talking to you uh, and Lisa earlier about it. This uh, um, I'd like to see a fee, a tur tournament fee for renting the Plex uh, for to rent the entire building in one fee. Um, right now, you have to parse it out. Uh, to you're going to rent the Rotary Hall, you got to rent the bits and pieces, uh, and put them all together. I think that there should be a fee for tournaments to rent the entire facility, um, and lock, stock, and barrel, if you like. So I think it would be good to see that uh, as an ad as an added fee um, in the future. One thought I had. Are there further uh, anything else from anybody? Yeah. So it's moved by the Vice Deputy Mayor that the fees and charges schedules be approved and forwarded to Council for adoption. Seconded by Councillor Grace. If there's no further discussion, then I'll say, ask all in favor. That's carried. Okay. So that moves us on to 14, which these two items are here just for your information, a projected legacy reserve fund, which shows you just what's going to happen with that. And the annual debt repayment limits uh, are there also for your information. Are there any questions from members on either of those information items? Have something? The Vice Deputy Mayor? Are we winding it down? Huh? Are we winding things down here? This is the last. These are the last items. Can I yeah? Unless you want to add a bunch of stuff. I just want to make a comment. Yeah. I, I just wanted to thank staff again. I know you have earlier, Mr. Mayor, but um, you know the way this budget was was presented this year, I, I, it's probably one of the easiest I've ever been involved with in, in terms of being able to follow it. And um, there, there was a tremendous amount of work, Sue and Daniel. I just love the way you presented it, Daniel and Sue. It was a great job and. Very easy to follow, as they say, and I just wanted to say a big thank you to all staff for the work they, they've done. Yeah. Is there anything on the information items? I don't see anything. Uh, so the next budget meeting will be the capital budget meeting on December 3rd, 2019. Thank you all for your patience, and thanks to staff for your work, and we'll see you back here uh, on the 3rd for capital. Thank you.